Okay, so for this lecture, we're gonna extend some topics. It's called embedding of manifolds. Okay, so recall the definition of locally compact. So the compact is that, well, for any X, there's a compact space such that there is a neighborhood such that they have this relation. And we give a new definition of a space being locally Euclidean, is that there exists a positive integer M such that for any point in the space, there's a neighborhood of the point such that it is homeomorphic with some open space V, open set V, open in Rn. Okay? So it's a homeomorphism. And we have that locally Euclidean implies locally compact. Why? Because, well, we just left F be the homeomorphism map. We can pick a ball and V, right, of Fx and V such that its closure is contained in B, right? <clears throat> now the inverse of this ball is neighborhood of X, and the inverse of the closure of the ball is also compact, right? Because, uh, I mean, the closure of a closed ball, it is closed and bounded, so it is compact. And this is a continuous function, right? So this, is, this set is compact, and it contains the neighborhood, a neighborhood of X. Okay, so locally Euclidean implies locally compact. So now we're going to define what do we mean by a man manifold. So a topological M manifold X is, is, a, is a topological space such that it is Hausdorff second countable and M locally Euclidean. Okay, so it is M manifolds if it's M locally Euclidean. Okay, so this is a, a topological M manifold. And manifolds are matrizable. Why? Like so we can just we can do our work with matrizable spaces. So when we when we in the future, when we're doing differential geometry, right? So we're all always dealing with manifolds and we know that manifolds are matrizable. So we can just use our results from matrizable spaces, like metric spaces, right? So manifolds are matrizable. This is a very good result. So how to prove it? The proof is using all the results we have used, we, we have proven above. So if it's locally Euclidean, right? Is it locally Euclidean, so it is locally compact. Well, it's locally compact Hausdorff, right? So it possesses a one-point compactification. So you can extend this, it's a subspace of a compact Hausdorff space. So the space Y is compact Hausdorff. But compact Hausdorff spaces are normal, and normal spaces are regular. And regular space is hereditary. So x is subspace of y, then x is also regular. And notice that it has second countable, right? So it has a countable basis and is regular. Then by horizontal matrization theorem, x is matrizable, okay? So manifolds are matrizable. So we've shown every regular space with countable basis can be embedded in R omega. But when the manifolds are compact, we show they can be embedded in some Rn finite dimensional. So when the, when the story is compact. So first we define a map, a real value map, and we define the support of phi to be the closure of the x such that it doesn't vanish. So look at this definition, it's the closure of the set. So if you're not in a set, then there exists a neighborhood such that it intersect this intersect this is equal to empty, right? And neighborhood u, right? So this means that phi u takes zero. So it vanishes locally. If you're not in the support, then locally you vanish. Okay, so another definition is a partition of unity. So given a finite open cover, or like phi i be continuous, <coughs> they are called a partition of unity dominated by u i. If each support is, uh, is contained in u i, and the sum is equal to one for all x and x. So this is called partition, right? Partition of unity, right? Something like this. So here we have a theorem called existence of finite partition of unity. So given the finite open covering of a normal space, of a normal space, then there exists a partition of unity dominated by this. So normal space, if you have a finite covering of a normal space, then you have a partition of unity. 
Okay, so step one, we shrink the collection to open cover X such that we have this uh, relation. So we, we do it by induction. So, so we let A be the close set this. Well, A is in some UI, right? And because it covers X, right? So A must contain in some UI. So by normality, there is a neighborhood of A such that we have this relation, right? So this means that this covers X, right? So suppose that V1 and Vk minus 1 are given, this covers X. And we define A to be X minus from V1 and Vk minus 1 and Uk plus 1. So we, we ignore Uk, we subtract Uk plus 1 and to Un. But it's a closed set and it must be contained in the Uk, right? Again, normality gives um, set Vk. So this covers X. So by induction, we could always, we're going to exhaust all the un. So we got a v1, vn, right? That covers x. And we have this relation, right? We have this relation. I mean, here, right? So now we prove the theorem. So given ui, we pick vi, and again, we pick wi. Because we can keep on picking, right? It's such that wi is the closure of wi's and vi's. So what we're using is because we're going to use the horizontal lemma. The closure of wi and this are disjoint closed set in the normal space x. So by horizontal lemma, we can pick a continuous, it is like completely regular, right? We can separate it by a continuous function, such that on closure of wi is equal to 1. And on, and on x minus vi, on this gives 1, on this gives 0, separate it. So the, this set is equal to vi. You could just take a look, right? Because uh, if it's not in VI, <coughs> so if you're, if you're not zero, you should be in AI. If you're not zero, if it's not zero, X not zero, then X is not in VI, right? This is uh, this is really easy to see, right? So we just take closure, we just take the closure of both sets, right? And as wi covers x, this function, this sum, should be positive for any x, right? Because this covers x. So any point x, it must be in this. So it must be in the closure. If we talk about the sum. Like the one always exists, right? And it's a function from zero to one. It's a function from zero to one, so this is always positive. And we define phi j to be each psi divided by the big psi. So <clears throat> because this is always positive, so the support of this is equal to the support of this, right? Support of this. So they have the same support. So this is a desired partition of unity. So here we're gonna prove the theorem, which is that compact n manifold can be embedded in Rn for some n. Okay. So first we cover by this. We choose embedding, and as normal, so we can pick a partition unity. We let A be the support. Now we define H i the zoom in map. Is defined as such. Now, H i is well defined. It's explained here. Okay. And H is continuous. <coughs> so define fx to be this. And f is continuous. To show this in embedding, we just show that it is injected because x is compact. So this is left as an exercise for you to show. Okay, so this is just some quick introduction to uh, embedding of manifolds. Okay, so we'll get to this later.